Hello and welcome back to A Better World. This is your host, Mitchell J. Rabin, and I'm very glad you're joining us again today for what is our second show on Blog Talk Radio. Uh, More often, people hear me on Progressive Radio Network uh, every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I've been a fixture for the last seven or so years, and uh, even more of a fixture, you could say, on A Better World TV in New York City, aired every Tuesday night at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and viewable either in Manhattan on television or online where it's simulcast slash webcast and you can tune in at www.abetterworld.net abetterworld.net and right there you'll have a chance to in the upper right hand corner click where it says simulcast and tune in. Last night For instance, we had Tyrone Jackson on, who runs something called the Wealthy Artist Millionaires Club, and he is taking the uh, artist and the actor, of which he is as well, and teaching them how to invest, how to play the stock market. So that old joke about actors when they meet on a street in New York City and ask each other, oh, what do you do? I'm an actor. Oh, so am I. And they say, oh, really? What restaurant do you work at? That joke will become something of the past when Tyrone Jackson is around because he's teaching actors, artists, creative people, and really anyone interested how to interface with the marketplace in a way that can be generating a residual income instead of working just hour to hour for a paycheck. It's another way of thinking, and Tyrone has it down. This is the kind of information among so many different kinds of information you would glean by listening to A Better World on both radio here on Blog Talk Radio as well as on Progressive Radio Network and A Better World TV on community cable television in the Big Apple. So please join our community at www.abetterworld.net. I'm starting off with a little bit of a Uh, promotion of what we're doing because we're really looking to have a major impact on the world and uh, by all that I can see from here we are actually doing so. Join our newsletter abetterworld.net or .tv and see what we've got going on there. We've got a lot of interesting things going on on our website from portable water filters available to our newsletter, which goes out free every week, announcing our respective radio and TV shows, and a blog. And you can also go to Huffington Post and learn more about the world and that from a progressive point of view as well, because that's what we clearly need. And that's why I started this second radio show, to bring forward ideas of progressive thinking, in the world economy, in the body politic, and actually every other aspect of our lives. It is, God knows, so needed. So in that vein, I really do want to uh, bring up a subject that I think is becoming more and more relevant, and that's the idea of third-party politics. For those of you who have been tracking this mad cap or Republican debate that's been going on, uh, state after state, and every single commercial news channel is just gobbling up this racehorse mentality. It's got nothing to do with service to America, nothing to do with helping Americans. It has everything to do with nurturing and nourishing the party of seeking power. And this is a tragedy of this two-party system as it has come to be in our times. I'm not saying it has to be that way by definition, but Ralph Nader properly called it twiddly dumb and twiddly d. And good luck if you can tell a big difference between these parties. Yes, 
Upon closer examination, aside from etiology, the voting records of the two are actually rather radically different. Uh, however, there is uh, an enormous overlap between the voting records, and even scare, as scarily and more is that both parties are funded by the same sources, the same Wall Street forces, the same nuclear power forces, the same old boys, what's referred to very reasonably as crony capitalism. We don't really have, I'm going to assert, true capitalism in this country, and nor have we for a long time. As long as you have what is referred to as government subsidies, how capitalistic is that? Where does that fit into the phrase free trade or a free marketplace? Yet interestingly, it is largely Republican-owned companies, Exxon, the other majors of oil, gas, the company seeking to do fracking, hydrofracking, if you don't know about that, do go to our website. I've got several roundtables about that that I've done on the other radio show. Just go under Radio Archive and or put it into the new search by category uh, search engine, and you'll learn about it. A lot of the big pharma companies, the insurance companies, tend to be Republican, and these are the companies that are always looking for subsidies. Another way, if you're poor, it's called a handout. See, the poor in this country, the lower, lower middle class, and the outright poor by legal definition, when they receive food stamps or SSI, or Social Security before age 65, or any other federal monies, those are called handouts. But when millions upon millions, sometimes tens, sometimes hundreds of millions of dollars, are given to some of the wealthiest corporations on the planet, those are called subsidies or grant money. It's all in what you call it. It's the difference between wearing a white collar and a blue one, as an example. So things are packaged differently, depending on your last name, depending on, unfortunately, your skin color and ethnicity, and as well, your gender. And this is not a way to conduct a democracy, nor is it a way to conduct uh, a true capitalist system, which could, by the way, benefit all. I tell people routinely through my Huffington Post articles, blogs, the newsletter, the other radio show, our postings on YouTube, that capitalism is but a vessel. It's a structure that gives us a means by which to conduct trade. It's in our blood to conduct trade. It's been with us forever. Ever, literally, as long as there has been what we can refer to as human society. And that goes back to the time in the caves. You know, I'll give you two fire sticks in exchange for one walnut, you know, as an example. It's just there. It's a perfectly legitimate, completely natural, and I'll say biological method of doing business and seeking survival through, by the way, cooperation. It's all a good thing. But when you bring government in that is willing to give out uh, subsidies, uh, especially to wealthy corporations, you're starting to skew the marketplace. It's no longer a true and natural marketplace. It's getting help from Big Brother or should I say daddy, but it's both daddy and brother. And no longer is there a level playing field. So other measures are taken. Or if you have a Federal Reserve Bank that moves zeros and digits on a computer keyboard, and all of a sudden Citibank, 
where Goldman Sachs is receiving billions of dollars at a stroke of a key that they are receiving at zero interest, but are allowed to then in turn lend out at a retail interest or LIBOR, which of course is lower, you have skewed the system. You are making money out of nothing, known of course as fiat currency, and the small guy, the small visionary entrepreneur doesn't stand a chance because the stack is all against him. So we call it capitalism, but it's not capitalism. It's actually a quasi form of socialism. Now, socialism has its own merits. I'm not saying it doesn't. I think there are socialist measures, or more popularly to call them Keynesian measures, are very good for an economy. So it's not that. It's what we call it, what we make believe something is, and then what happens when we're not telling the truth about it, and what happens in people's psyche as a result. So all of this is but prelude to say that we are positioned to move beyond a Democrat and Republican polarity, and as John Hagelin former presidential candidate in the Natural Law Party that probably few of you know about, called it a duopoly. Not a monopoly, but a duopoly. And it's time to end it because it's not advancing the will of the American people, which should be evidenced to all, truly evidenced. But the problem in your seeing it, if you do not listen to shows like this, is if you're tuned into CNN or MSNBC or on the other side, so-called other side, Fox News, you ain't going to get the whole story. You're going to get a partial story and truly under a very limited looking glass, a very small aperture of perception because there are vested interests on both sides to tell the narrative their way. And the story isn't very interesting. It's more like betting on horses. And that's what's going on between Mitt Romney and Newt Gingrich and Santorum. And before that, of course, we had Herman Cain and all of his philandering. And before that, we had this one. Before that, we had that one. And what, by the way, happened to Ron Paul, who keeps showing a steady, stable appearance in every single primary, but he's marginalized because they don't really like his politics because he's not for war. What kind of world is this? What have we created? We've created a menace. So I want to bring up the entire old historically based process of politics in the United States of America and across the world, by the way, which is known as third-party politics, which gives us the opportunity to have a different voice. There have been socialists, there have been communists, there have been other libertarians, there have been other capitalists, there have been other democratic, there have been other republic voices out there in the body politic since the beginning of this country. Typically, if you look historically, we have had three, four, five, six, and up to seven parties that have been active with followings, with constituencies in this country. It's really been in the last 40 to 50 years that these two central parties have become so powerful. They have been able to undemocratically monopolize and marginalize all the others. As an example, John Hagelin qualified legally for being in the televised national uh, debates in the year 2000 and was illegally excluded from it by the Federal Election Committee. And nobody knows this story. I happen to have been on the inside, and I had John Hagelin on the TV show back then a handful of times. So I know the inside scoop, but few do. It is not ethical, it's not democratic by any means, and unfortunately, it's sometimes all too often legal. 
So I want to bring to your attention a politician, former mayor of Salt Lake City, Utah, Rocky Anderson, who is now a presidential candidate in the Justice Party, former Democrat, repudiated them for not being democratic. (laughs) And uh, he left the party and he started his own. He is a man with a stellar reputation. If you go to www.voterocky.org, you will see what he's up to. I'm working diligently now at getting him on The Daily Show and The Steve Colbert Show because he's also funny. But he's strong in his insistence upon the rule of law. No exceptions right on through the White House. He called for the impeachment of Bush and Cheney during those years because of illegal activities that can be proven. And he, as a 21-year-old career in law, laid out the evidence for it. This is not just some moment of upset or anger. He called for not entering an illegally based war in Iraq and stepped on the national stage by calling for both of these. And now he is thankfully running for president. I encourage you all to go to www.voterocky.org or www.justicepartyusa.org, justicepartyusa.org, and kick those tires. Check this out because we are at a time in history where there is such great disillusionment with the two-party system. Republicans are so unhappy with these Republican choices. A lot of them aren't going out to even vote. Democrats are also, many of them are extremely unhappy with Obama and the voting record of the Democratic members of Congress. Both are disillusioned because both parties lie and they are basically representing their clients and their clients happen to populate large portions of Wall Street and the standard security military industries and the energy industries, not to mention big pharma and insurance and chemical. These are the big boys that call the shots, and they have Congress and the White House in their pocket, and this is not news, but it's become more apparent to more people and the disillusionment with business as usual in Washington and with both these parties has reached an all-time high. What gives? Well, I'll tell you what gives. The entry of a new party to hopefully win, yes, but at least to intelligently and rationally influence these two parties And just like when Ross Perot ran, if you remember, he bought his way into the televised debates, and he changed the face of that election because he sounded better than both the Republican and the Democratic candidate. On stage, a voice of business reason was there. And we want to set up an environment in our country that will allow for business development to occur and develop that is socially responsible, conscious capitalism, compassionate capitalism. There are oodles of money to be made at it. That's not an issue, but it can be done with heart. It can be done with love. It can be done with common sense and in accordance with natural laws of sustainability and zero waste, using everything as well as our own, in this case, American resources. Now, I noticed that we have a caller in who happens to be a dear friend of mine and colleague, David Katzmeyer. Let me see if I can figure out how to get him on the air. And once I do, I will patch him in because David is an expert in understanding cycles on all levels. Uh, micro and macro cycles of the country and of the world in politics, in economics, in psychology, 
and in spirituality there are emotional physical mental cycles that we are all subject to we are all participating in and there are times when times are ripest for new kinds of ideas and i would like dave to weigh in on this thinking relative to what i've been saying so let me see if i've figured out how to do this dave are you on the line you are not on the line just yet. Okay, let me try this. I'm now my own engineer, so I'm still figuring this out. Hello, Dave. Are you on the line? Yes, I am, Mitchell. Oh, good. All right. I pushed the right button. I'm both host, narrator, and engineer, so I just figured it out. Dave, good to have you on the line. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. So you've been hearing me speak about... Uh, third-party politics. You heard me speak about Rocky Anderson. You heard me speak about the state of the duopoly, if you will, of the Republicans and the Democrats and how both of them are failing us as party members. (laughs) And boy, that sounds communistic. And as Americans, which is the most important thing. What, from a cyclist's point of view, do you see relative to these subjects? There is something about alternatives now that is not just um, something intriguing to the mind, but it's also something that is due based on what time it is. And what time it is depends on where you are in a cycle. And where you are in a cycle depends on how long the cycles are and at what phase you're in it. Um, But to be brief, there are many cycles moving at the same time in our society and here in the United States we have a group of cycles going through phases of highs and lows and there are patterns in it that we can find but uh, the way to wrap up something that uh, I gathered from your introductory uh, segment to this program is an old saying in betting which is when the odds are split between the favorites bet on the long shot Uh That's what I think about. Uh, It comes to mind when I hear about uh, the interest in alternative candidates, which has been rising. We had John B. Anderson back in 1980. Then we had the uh, surprise showing of Ross Perot, uh, who who was showing potential for actually winning the presidency back in 1992, uh, and greater and greater interests. Uh, in this. And why is that? And why do we have, uh, in some cases, uh, at or past record low turnouts in Republican primaries uh, in in the few states that have happened so far. Uh, It's certainly down very low. So the enthusiasm isn't there for the mainstream. You mentioned uh, the Republicans and the Democrats. Although they have differences, there's a lot of ground over which they overlap. And it's uh, the the more that uh, we're triangulated in this fight between come to our camp, don't be one of them, and the other side saying, come to our camp, don't be one of them, uh, they're actually wind up starting to sound the same. <laughs> yes. Isn't well, that curious? Isn't that interesting? Yeah. you know. And the whole boundaries of us and them uh, is something in itself that's waning. Uh, there is the cycle high that gave us the machine age also gave us a sense of territoriality. The time that you're building more and the time that you're exploring more is the time that you're more territorial. And territorial isn't just this is our national boundaries and don't you come on my land or I'm going to be shooting you. Uh, It's also an us and them mentality. Are you the same religion? Are you the same race? Are you the same belief? And everything like that. Uh, And the lines are drawn in the sand and people are defending their territories, their space even more. That is going out of style. Mm-hmm. As the age is declining, so is the territoriality. Now, what else is going on? Well, that's not the only cycle in the world. To be brief, we are now going through the birth pangs of a new era. The birth pangs come with 9-11. The birth pang comes with the fall of the mortgage companies in 2008. The, the birth pang comes in shakeups in governments around the world. The Arab Spring and how many world leaders have gone down, you know, Mubarak and 
Gaddafi and so forth. Uh, the whole government of Iceland was replaced because of an economic collapse. All of these things happening within the, within the same decade of time. That should tell us that change is in progress. And the so from the point of view of cycles, relative to uh, change in, poli- in, in economics, because the Iceland fall was sort of an inside job, no pun intended, and it was highlighted in the documentary Academy Award-winning film, Inside Job. Um, So that's more business as usual. But based on the cycles that you're seeing now, it sounds, Dave, that there's a change of foot that's a different foot. Is that what's going on? uh, In other words, is this a time for third-party politics to gain a a rise in the cycle because of the change of mind and heart of the people? It is going to gain, uh, but I'm I'm going to make an easy prediction that in this election, I don't think that we're going to see a third-party candidate really take the presidency. I believe that in this election... It's going to be a Republican or a Democrat. But in the long term, uh, you're going to see – you could see an entirely new party rise about. Because I want to talk about crisis very briefly because we're seeing crisis all over the world, uh, you know, from attacks and falls of governments and economic failures and the collapse of Lehman Brothers and and Enron and so forth. And, you know, the the fact that they're all happening is not a disconnected thing, but – Crisis tells you one of two things is happening. Either it's castles crumbling at the end of an era, and you have a crisis as the high of that era crosses down into the low. You do that with a shakeup to take things from high to low. But when after they go through the low, they come back up, they go through a crisis to bring back a new high. So right. it's either castles crumbling. I've just got another. Or, you've got another twenty yeah. seconds, unfortunately. So you've got to uh, it's, it's wrap either castles up the crumbling good or idea. birth pangs of a new era. And what we're in is a birth pang of a new era because as the machine age falls, we're going into a new era of romanticism and a new age of reason. And that will last throughout this century and through the next one. That's where the cycles are. So know this shakeup is necessary. Excellent. That is inspiring. Thank you. <laughs> and that's where the go. alternatives will come. Look for the rising exactly. tide. Those who have heart and reason, not strength. Strength is very right. good. Your website for people to learn more about your wisdom connected to politics and economics and cycles is www. Calorhythms. That's K A L A R H Y T H M S. dot com. Thank you so much, David Katzmeyer. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Join us again. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, My website is www.abetterworld.net. We're winding up our second show here on Blog Talk Radio. Please join us at our website. Join our newsletter. Become part of our family. And next week, we will have a very interesting show. The author of Heart at work. I hope you can join us. Bye-bye now.